dementia is a modern day problem. And I really want you to grab that, that we didn't have the rates of dementia that we have now. We didn't have that generations ago. It's a modern day problem. And it is really linked to nutrition. In this video, I want to dive into three critical foods that are leading to dementia. And dementia is becoming more and more of a challenge. I just really want to express that if you have pre-dementia, if you have a loved one with dementia or pre-dementia, my heart goes out to you. I, my 88-year-old father is showing signs of pre-dementia, and I understand how difficult it can be. So why, one of the reasons I want to do this video was to really give you some action items that you can do so that you can start to bring some healing back because dementia is a modern day problem. And I really want you to grab that, that we didn't have dement the rates of dementia that we have now. We didn't have that generations ago. It's a modern day problem and it is really linked to nutrition. You can change the symptoms of dementia quite a bit if you change nutrition. Now, I'm going to talk about the foods to avoid on this video, but I really also want to talk first about some really important foods to add in because I've been helping people change their nutrition habits for years, and I've always found it's much easier to add things in than to take away. So let's start with what we can add in. So the first one, and hopefully you've heard this over and over again, is fatty fish. And the thing about fatty fish is you want to make sure that it is free of heavy metals because as you're going to learn, heavy metals is one of the things that causes dementia. So make sure that the, your fish, the fatty fish you are eating is coming from clean waters. So my two, well, I'll give you a handful of my favorite fatty fish. I love wild salmon. I love cod, cod is very fatty. And then I don't love so much, but I eat it anyway, is mackerel and sardines. So, you know, those are easy. If you have a loved one, make sure they're getting plenty of those fatty fishes. Um, dark chocolate, and when I mean dark, I mean like 70, 80% chocolate, very bitter, can be great for supporting good brain health. Leafy green vegetables, also really high in nutrients that support brain health. And blueberries. Blueberries, if you heard the episode I did with Jim Quick on the Resetter podcast, my podcast, we'll put a link for that here. He talks a lot about blueberries being incredible superfood for brain health. So let's make sure we're adding foods in and, and making them yummy as well. I will tell you for salmon, if you don't have my Eat Like a Girl recipe or book, cookbook, the salmon for a cocky is my favorite recipe in there. It's a beautiful way to cook salmon. So outside of those foods that I want you to add in, these are the three worst foods that you're going to want to take out. And the first one is high mercury fish. So mercury exposure is a major risk factor for dementia. And there was actually a 2020 review in the Journal of Metabolic Brain Disorders that noted that mercury buildup increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease. In fact, the study went on to say that the most toxic form of mercury to humans is methylmercury, to which humans are exposed to methylmercury by ingesting fish. So how does that happen? If you're not aware, our waters are polluted. And so a lot of what we get in fish and the mercury we get in fish is coming because of the environmental pollution that is occurring in water. So the first thing I wanna say is, can we please take better care of our environment so we don't have to have conversations like this? But when we are really looking at the high mercury fish, we have to understand that the worst fish that you can eat that have the worst amount of mercury in it, and this is what I really want you to grab, write it down, keep, always keep your eye on this because it's the bioaccumulation of, of mercury in the fish I'm about to t tell you that is really causing these high dementia rates. And here they are. 
swordfish, tuna, three different types of tuna, big eye, yellowfin, and albacore tuna, orange ruffy, king mackerel, and shark. Let me repeat those again. Swordfish, tuna, orange ruffy, king mackerel, and shark. Those fish have the highest amount of mercury in them. What I will tell you is that I, we used to do in my clinic all the time, heavy metal detoxing and every single person, I mean, we must have tested thousands of people's toxicity level. Every single person we tested was high in lead and high in mercury. People who had the highest level of mercury were the ones with the greatest brain challenges. So what happens is mercury can stick on the end of a neuron. There's these little spiky um, projections out from the end of a neuron called dendrites. And those dendrites are carrying information across to another dendrite. And at the end of the dendrite is where mercury can sit. And so all of a sudden, a thought gets stopped because the mercury blocks it from jumping across to the next de uh, dendrite and continue the thought. And so what that will look like for yourself or what that will look like with a loved one is you walk into the room and you don't know where you're, why you walked into the room. Or I'll, I'll share with you, you know, a very personal story that happened to me just a couple of weeks ago with my dad is he, we was, we were getting ready to put he and my mom on a plane back home. Um, and I explained to him everything that was going on that day and, and how he was going to get in a car that took him to the airport and he was going back home and he got it. He seemed very coherent. And then an hour later he said, when are, you know, what day are we leaving? And I said, you're leaving today, dad. Do you remember? I, I told you you're leaving today. And he was like, oh my God, I totally forgot. Well, that's because it can be that block of mercury that's not allowing these thoughts to move into areas where memory is stored. So, you know, many of you are dealing with this and I know it's, it's a really, really hard one. So what's also interesting though, I really wanna, I wanna add this in because we have other places that we get mercury and, and this is not, this is not to cause huge controversy. It's for you to go and research. But this methylmercury is also in some vaccines, specifically the flu shot. So if you are a proponent of the flu shot, please ask for the mercury-free ones because some of us are susceptible to that mercury that is in vaccines. So make sure that you're always questioning any anything that gets injected in you, but especially when it comes to vaccines, there is a movement in the last several years to remove mercury from vaccines. So just make sure that you're getting those. Okay, have you been watching my videos and you're like, I don't know how to put this stuff all together? You might need my fasting lifestyle free course. I'll teach you exactly how to do it. Just click on the link above, it'll take it to you and it's absolutely free, my gift to you. Now on the flip side of this, you can also increase your omega-3s. So a 2023 study in current opinions in lipidology found that omega-3 in, intake decreases the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. And we have, I mentioned this earlier, we have some great fish. So it's really weird because on one hand, we have this one this set of fish that is gonna contribute to dementia because of the high mercury loads. And then on this other hand, we have some fish that are really high in omegas that is gonna improve your brain function. And the best fatty fish, the best way to remember this, I keep forgetting to tell you all this, I've said it in other videos, is an acronym called SMASH. And SMASH stands for the S is salmon, the M is mackerel, small mackerel, not king mackerel, the A is anchovies, the S is sardines, and the A H are herring. Those are the fish that are the best for omega-3s. Now I get that like a lot of them are like, mm, don't really taste good. I can tell you in Eat Like a Girl, I have several recipes in that book that my chefs created that include salmon, 
sardines. There's a sardine toast, a tostada in there that is phenomenal. So if you need some good recipes for that, you can go check out Eat Like a Girl. Okay, second food or drink in this case that I want you to stay away from that leads to dementia is alcohol. Now, we've talked a lot about alcohol here on my YouTube page, and alcohol is interesting because we've looked at it from many different angles. But when we're looking at it from the angle of dementia, we have to remember alcohol is a poison. And there was a huge 2019 meta-analysis that was published in the Alzheimer's Research and Therapy Journal that found moderate to heavy, which is two drinks a night, was linked to a major increase in brain decline and dementia risk. So look at how often you're, you're drinking. Cut back. Don't be in that two drinks a night. How about two drinks a week, one drink a week, or get completely off of it? And what's interesting is that that same study, the one I just talked about, the big meta-analysis, they found that total abstinence, abstinence increased the chances of dementia. So let's talk about that for a moment. How could that be? And I really think that it, it boils down to stress. Stress is another, I don't, it's another big one that can cause dementia. And when we drink moderately, one night, one drink a night, or um, for women is what they recommend, and two drinks a night for men is what the research is recommending. Again, I will put the links in here for you on that. And I would even say for men, we need to bring it down under two drinks. So the bottom line is keep it in moderation so that you keep your brain healthy. The last one in the, the food group that I want you to stay off of is refined sugar. There was a 2023 study in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease that looked at diets and brain function of over 700 older adults, and they looked at it over an eight-year period. And they found that as sugar intake increased, so did the, the incidence of dementia. So those who ate the most amount of sugar had more than twice the amount of dementia cases. So let's, let's think about that for a moment. How many people are drinking multiple glasses of alcohol every night and having a lot of sugar. Those two are the de deadly combo. And then you add the, the mercury and fatty fish in there. And now you've got a dementia firestorm. So make sure that you're adapting to uh, a different behavior so that you get the brain to function differently. The last thing I want to say on this and something that I think is really important because we don't get a lot of female studies and I found one and it's a 2022 study in nutritional neuroscience and it studied over 38,000 older women. And what they found was higher sugar intake was linked to higher Alzheimer's. Now for women, remember that, that women are more Incidence of Alzheimer's goes up in women more than men. Um, and a lot of that is because as we move through menopause, we don't have that neuroprotective effect of estrogen anymore. So even if you are taking estrogen, what I want you to realize is that as a woman, a postmenopausal woman, you have to be even more diligent about alcohol intake and even more diligent about sugar intake and making sure we're staying away from the mercury-laden fish and the mercury-laden behaviors. So unfortunately, because estrogen is so neuroprotective to our brains, as we move into those postmenopausal years, these behaviors become so much more pivotal for overall brain function. So I hope, I hope that helps. I am here to answer questions for you all. So if you have any questions, leave them in, in the comments and my team gathers those and brings them to me. We build whole YouTube videos off your questions. But the importance of, of this video for me is because this is a personal topic because I do have a dad that's in dementia. I, I'm passionate about helping menopausal women thrive in their postmenopausal years. So if you're, you know, seeing that there are signs of dementia, uh, Alzheimer's with a loved one that's a female, know that that is more or more susceptible because of the loss of the neuroprotective effect of, of estrogen. 
But most importantly, I really want you to understand how much control you have over these chronic conditions. They don't just randomly happen to you. When my dad has been clinically diagnosed with pre-dementia, I knew exactly what we needed to do with his nutrition so that we can mitigate the symptoms. And it's, uh, I want you to ha feel that same sense of empowerment. So as always, please know I'm cheering you on. I'm here to bring you really good resourceful information that puts you back in control of your health. I'm here to make this channel your channel and what you need. So always leaving me comments is helpful and then I'll customize more videos for you. So as always, I hope that helps and I'm sending you all a big hug. Okay, if you love this video, you're gonna wanna check out the next video of my food series. I, on this video, wanna talk about the healthy foods that you might be eating that will stop you from a long and healthy life.